In my last video, I talked about building my new speakers and in particular, how I'm gonna be building my new subwoofer section. And I actually built a mock-up and tested it and did all that fun stuff. And since then, on that video, I've gotten several comments from people who seem to have misconceptions about what isobaric actually is. And so I thought I would make a quick video talking about what exactly it is, what exactly it's supposed to do, and why you would do it. First of all, isobaric, the word, means equal pressure or constant pressure, something like that. And it, it, it's referring to the space between the two woofers, which has to be sealed, completely sealed. The normal arrangement for this, or the more popular arrangement for this, is to take two woofers and put them face to face, say with a baffle in between, a baffle being the front panel of the speaker. However, that presents the backside of the, the woofer to the world for you to see. And, you know, some people think that's attractive looking, industrial, and in some cir circumstances, I'm sure probably down my listening room actually it would be appropriate, but uh, I wanted to go with having the front of the woofer sticking out. So I'm going back to front, which is this right here, okay? You can see it's two woofers uh, in line with each other, and it's very difficult to hold it up because it's very heavy. And there's a sealed chamber in between, except this one's cut open so you can see inside. All right, that sealed chamber is very important because what it does is it couples these two woofers together. It joins them. It fastens them together so that they act as one unit. So instead of two woofers operating independently, what you have is two woofers that are acting as a single woofer. So sound comes out of the front of the cone on this one on the front, and sound comes out of the back of the cone on the one in the back. You really have to think about that airspace that tightly sealed airspace in between, almost like glue that connects these two together. And the reason why you would do that is, okay, in my instance, I have these woofers. And these woofers are older. They were designed for much bigger boxes. I'm talking about one of these woofers in a 200 liter box. 200 liter box is pretty big, as you can see in this drawing. I added in the model for scale so you can see just how big it is. And by doing this with these woofers, you can cut that box size in half and it will perform the same as the original driver in that bigger box. As far as base extension and overall tuning goes. So that is the key right there. I have these woofers. They originally designed for a bigger box. I don't want a bigger box. I have four of these that I can use. They were relatively inexpensive to begin with. So I can afford to put two of these in each box in this arrangement and cut the box size in half. So thanks to this arrangement, you can reduce the box volume down to something reasonable. And what they've been doing in recent years uh, in essence, is taking the attributes of this isobaric arrangement here, these two woofers together like this, and putting it in one woofer so you can reduce the, so they'll work in a smaller box. And there are like two chief ways to do that. The first is to increase the moving mass, which is the cone, the weight of the cone, you know, drive that up. The other way is to increase the stiffness of the suspension. When you look at it realistically like that, you're not making any compromises by doing this. This is not a um, solution that's sloppy or gonna produce bad bass or slow bass or anything like that. Really what you're doing is you're just matching the stock drivers that you can get today by doing this with two of these older woofers. 
Now, of course, there are disadvantages to doing this. First of all, is the amount of space that it takes up inside the box because you have to add another woofer. Like if you were to do a clamshell and have the other woofer sticking out outside, that wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't be taking up extra space there. But like I said, you're dealing with the um, ugly looks for a lot of people, and me included. So also you have to build that chamber in between, which is fairly complex and it has to be well sealed. Like it has to be absolutely sealed. You can't have any leaks there. Otherwise it's gonna compromise how well it works. So a little bit more complex. But other than that, the only other major uh, disadvantage is a reduction in sensitivity. When you do this, you're losing three decibels of sensitivity. However, <laughs> when you wire them together in parallel, if they're eight ohm drivers, you'll get that three decibels back. So it evens out in the end, depending on how you wire it. If you wire it in series, you're losing more again. So the best thing to do, if your amplifier can handle the four ohm load, that is, which most can these days, especially, you know, the retail integrated receivers and amps that you can get. They'll easily handle a four ohm load. So to sum up, you would do this if you have the drivers already and they're not suitable for a small box. That's a way to make them suitable. And then you need at least two for each box. So that's another thing to consider. If you're gonna go out and buy new uh, woofers to build a, a new project, I wouldn't recommend doing this. Like I said, there are disadvantages. Chief among them is the complexity of the build. So you want to avoid it unless you, you know, have everything already and then you can take advantage of it.